Hi guys, this is Light and welcome to my video guide on turn 12 or final coil of Bahamut turn 2. The boss you are facing in this turn is the Primal Phoenix. This boss battle has a tight DPS check and deals high damage during the add phase. So it is recommended that all your party members has a minimum health point of 6000. And as usual, your pot and HQ foot buff to help boost your DPS as Phoenix has an enraged timer of 13 minutes. Phase 1. Start the fight by main tanking Phoenix right in the middle of the arena, facing outwards. The tank should be ready right in the middle to pick up a new ad spawn called the Banu. The Banu will spawn every 1 minute in the middle of the arena for the whole phase of 1 and 2, so it's a good idea to keep a lookout at the duty timer when it spawns for the first time and keep track of when the next Banu will spawn. The Banu will hit very hard, so make sure to keep your mitigations up. Down the ads as soon as possible. You will need to spread the Banus up and drop them away from each other before they die, as they will be revived during the ads phase. And if any Banus are too close to one another when they revive, they will receive a buff which makes them harder to kill, almost ensuring a wipe. So for that purpose, my team dropped the banus according to this diagram shown. The first one right in the middle, second on the northeast, third on the northwest, fourth on the southeast, and the fifth banu on the southwest. You shouldn't have a sixth banu because that would pretty much ensure a wipe as you would meet the enraged timer. The next attack is Revelation, which does a hard hitting attack on the main tank and also leaves a vulnerability debuff which will instant kill the main tank on the next revelation. Stone skin at low to help mitigate damage. A tank swap is also required before the next revelation comes. Phoenix will soon cast Blackfire, which will target the off tank, one healer and one DPS. For this purpose, we position our DPS at waymark A here, our off tank at waymark B here, and our healers at waymark C over here. A black fire will spawn around 2 seconds after the cast finishes. Everyone will have to be outside of the black fire's hitbox. Touching the black fire will cause it to explode and deal an AoE damage, leaving the players around it with a vulnerability debuff. If the black fires are too close, they will tether to one another and deal an AoE damage to the players around it. The only way to remove the black fire is to have the white fire which Phoenix casts next to overlap the black fire for it to be vulnerable to attacks. One good way to kill off the black fires is to have a black mage cast flare for AoE damage. It is also time for the tank to do a tank swap before the next revelation comes. Phase 1 will continue all the way until 80% of Phoenix HP. From phase 2 onwards, Phoenix will no longer cast black or white fire, but Banus will continue to spawn, so off tank, pay attention to it. Phase 2 begins with a new ability called the Brand of Purgatory. One random party member will be targeted by this debuff. The debuff icon will either be green or purple. There is no difference between the two icons other than the color. This debuff can be transferred by touching another player, dealing around 4 to 5 thousand damage every time it's transferred. This debuff will cause the player to be instantly killed by Phoenix Flame of Unforgiveness attack in one hit. To survive the Flames of Unforgiveness, the player with the brand will have to pass his debuff by touching another player when the Flames of Unforgiveness is casting. To deal with this mechanic, a party has the player with the brand debuff to pass it to a healer immediately. Both the healers will then continue passing to each other when Flames of Unforgiveness is casting for the rest of Phase 2. Make sure the HP is topped up before every transfer of the debuff. Following up, we have the Blue Fire. 
Phoenix will mark a blue icon above a player's head. The player will then need to position themselves a little behind Waymark C. After a few seconds, a small blue pool of fire will appear underneath him, which will then explode in a large ring, dealing high AoE damage and place a heavy debuff on anyone who is hit by it. After the blue fire explodes, the blue fire will remain on the ground which will be used to deal with the next mechanic. Anyone who touches the blue fire at this point will reduce his healing or damage and also place a small damage over time on him. Next, we have the red fire. Phoenix will cast a fireball which will tether to a random player, chasing the tethered player after its spawn. One player, in our case, we have our bot handle this. We'll have to pick up the blue fire on the ground when red fire is casting and then intercept the fireball. Please take note that at the end of the red fire's cast, Phoenix will release a small AoE around it which will remove the blue fire on the ground or the blue fire debuff on the player if either of them is too close to Phoenix. Standing on top of dead Banu's body will also remove the blue fire debuff. Failing to intercept the red fire, will also cause an AoE massive damage and leaves the whole party with a damage over time debuff, easily wiping the whole raid. Be careful of picking up the blue fire debuff when Phoenix is nearing 52% of HP, as Phoenix will be phasing into Ed's face soon, and you'll lose out on DPS if your party member has a blue fire debuff. This phase will continue all the way to 52% HP before moving into Ed's face. At 52% HP, Phoenix will move itself to the north end of the arena and put up a fire barrier. During this phase, if anyone who is inside the barrier of the fire where Phoenix is, will die instantly. Phoenix will begin casting Flames of Rebirth at an interval. Every cast of Flames of Rebirth will deal a raid-wide AoE attack, dealing massive damage to everyone. This will also revive any dead Banus on the ground. Also, every cast will increase the Flames of Rebirth stack on the boss, increasing the damage of Flames of Rebirth by every cast. The stack will also increase on the following conditions. Number 1. Having the adds too near to the boss. Number 2. Having any Banus be buffed by any Banus reviving near it. Number 3. Having any players die or number 4, having any player's corpse on the ground. All the previous banus that you've killed will be revived in this phase. If any banus are revived too near to each other, they will receive a massive HP buff, which is the reason why you have to spread them out before you drop them in phase 2. As soon as the banus are revived, you should mark them out in the order to kill them. Focus DPS on the first banu, ASAP. The caster might want to use Limit Break during this phase. Each time a small Banu is dead, the group will need to move away from its dead body. All else, the rest of the Banu will receive a buff when it's revived into a bigger Banu. For our group, we just move from the center to southwest then to southeast, and then we alternate back and forth between the southwest and southeast for the rest of the time each time a small Banu dies. Also, always focus DPS on the big Banus first if there's one alive. Then be prepared to drop the next small one when the big one is almost dead. A good way to judge when to kill the Banus is to put auto focus on Phoenix and pay attention to it using Flames of Rebirth. 
If you feel that you can kill the big Banu before the next Flames of Rebirth, you may go ahead and drop the next small Banu. Please be careful of having two big Banus at the same time as they will receive a buff which makes them harder to kill, which you like to avoid it if possible. Final phase, after the last ad is down, Phoenix will begin casting Rebirth. Use this opportunity to top up everyone's HP to full health before spreading out into positions. Main tank should move to Phoenix as soon as possible and be ready to tank it. For the final phase, there will no longer be any blue or red fire. However, Phoenix will retain Revelations, Brand of Purgatory, and Flames of Unforgiveness along with a few new mechanics. Phoenix will begin the fight with casting the Brand of Purgatory. But this time, whoever has the debuff will pass it to the main tank immediately because for the final phase, it will be easier for the main tanks and orb tanks to handle it. Right after the Brand, Phoenix will use a new attack called Fountain of Fire. For this mechanic, you are to have a party member inside the fountain to help soak up stacks of damage. There will be a total of 8 stacks that you must soak. The more stacks you soak, the more damage you will receive while inside the fountain. If you fail to do so, the stacks will instead buff up Phoenix, making the fight harder than it should already be. For my party, we have the off tank soak up to a total of 4 stacks before switching to 2 stacks on each melee. It is important for the off tank to be prepared to pick up the Brand of Purgatory debuff from the main tank right after soaking 4 stacks of the fountain debuff. Simultaneously, when the off tank is soaking the fountain, the main tank should be prepared to pop cooldowns to mitigate the revelation damage. During the final phase, everyone other than the tanks and the melee handling the fountain should spread out as Phoenix will be using Scotch Pinion. This attack will place several tethers on the party members and after a few seconds, a phoenix will charge towards the players in a straight line. For this mechanic, we simply have the players who are tethered to stop moving and instead let the non-tethered players to move out of the tethers way. If it happens that the players soaking up the fountain stacks are being targeted by the scotch pinion, make sure to have the scholar at lower the player to save him. After this, the rotation will end with Phoenix casting Flames of Rebirth and then returning back to beginning with Fountain of Fire. It is also at this time that the tank should do a tank swap. After every two rotations of Flames of Rebirth, Phoenix will also jump off and cover the group with several round AoE attacks. Have your party be prepared to avoid the Scorch Pinion and make sure to add low the tether players to ensure their survival. So basically, the rotation of the final phase will always be the brand of purgatory, which is only on the first rotation, pass the debuff to the main tank immediately, followed up by fountain of fire, which the off tank will begin by soaking 4 stacks of debuff. Simultaneously, revelation will happen during this time, so be prepared to pop mitigations and virus it. After this, the Flames of Unforgiveness, of which the off tank will pick up the debuff from the main tank. The melee will then take over the fountain for 2 stacks. And 
then another two more stacks with the other melee. After this, Phoenix will use Flames of Rebirth, of which the tank will do a swap during this time. This whole rotation will repeat twice, and Phoenix will then use the AoE Plumes attack, of which Scotch Pinion will happen throughout the whole phase. Please be noted that if Phoenix reaches 16 stack of Flames of Rebirth, it is basically an enrage and it will start spamming Flames of Rebirth until the whole party is wiped. And with that, I end my guide on the final coin of Bahamut turn 12. With the stringent DPS check, it is highly recommended to use your limit break tree with a melee to keep up the DPS. Other than that, keep everyone alive in final phase is also the key to clearing turn 12. I wish you all the best in your fight and please like, favorite and subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more contents from us in the future.